All right, everyone, welcome back to FOF Esports. Come friend or foe, one and all. Here we are again, back over to the Helios League, still continuing on our week five, day number two, where we now have SEAL Team Chris. STC currently one and eight, going heads up versus RLS, my favorite name of the bracket, Restless Leg Syndrome. Currently standing at five and four. I am your play-by-play -play caster for the next couple of games, Schnecky IRL, joined in by Found. Yeah, I'm, it's good to be here. I'm happy I, got, I finally got some games with our favorite sports announcer who has been returning back to the league for his second week. Are you excited, man? How has FOF been? You had your first week last week. Now you're here for your second one. You're turning. How's it going? Oh, yeah, man. You know how it is out here. We save the best for last, man. You got to get that Friday night cast with FOS, one of our favorite esports organizations that I've been a part of. And it's only been two weeks. And that's a really big statement here. <laughs> Oh, so much praise, man. I've been with them, these guys for a long time, since the beginning, and it's been, uh, it's never been, I would never say it's been up and down. It's been perfect all the way through. These guys are so hardworking, and fr frankly, so are the teams. And speaking of that, you have SEAL Team Chris return, coming back to the league. They have been struggling somewhat, but they are all players that are been friends for a long time. They're very close, but there has been a little bit of a change. Sungo is now returning back to the support role where he had been playing mid for them for quite a while. And it looks like Lightning Soul is been, is not available today, so they had to find some substitutions. Wow! And from my understanding, you know, I'm I'm still getting used to the, uh, the the teams here, so I'm trying to slowly dig out and kind of get to know some of these teams. From my understanding, Shield Team Chris is barely three games in as they have came in, taking over for an 0 and 6 team. So they're also looking to dig themselves out of a hole here. And you know what that means? It all starts off with that draft. So we do see what the bands were. A lot of the bands directed towards the top half of the map from STC, whereas there's a lot of mid lane bands from RLS putting a lot of eggs into the basket of I'm soloing for the mid lane STC. Yeah, absolutely. And then they've already taken up a mid lane pick. You have the Ari coming through, a hyper assassin. She scales quite well. She is yep. one of the weaker ones assassins that we've had seen in the game. She hasn't returned to the professional scene for quite a while. I am happy that I'm so he's so confident to have been picking him up, so uh, picking her up so early into Pangu Soul, who has been a phenomenal mid laner and is going to be the opportunity for him to have counter pick. So let's see what he's going to choose to select into an Ari. Absolutely right. And that's kind of where that Ziggs pick did come in as well earlier on from RLS. Having that Ziggs, you can always throw it mid if you feel comfortable enough. Whereas when you do that against an RE lane, you kind of just have to be able to dodge the charm to be able to stay alive in that lane. But we're probably going to see that as a flex. It's one of the reasons why you're able to pick Ziggs in that tier two pick here. So we're going to see where some of the bands are now. That's going to be Oriana targeted towards Pangu Soul. Meaning if you're Team SEC, you're probably thinking that that Ziggs is going bot lane. Yeah, absolutely. They're still trying to pinch this mid lane pool as heavily as possible. I expect this the next band to either be Victor or Syndra. And whatever option they are going to leave up to Pangu Soul, they're trying to get him into a, 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 a mid laner that has less mobility, something that Ari can really pick on. And if we, I do want to give credit to Trulax, who is coming from the jungle, going heading up to the top side, and he's going to be taking Shen. Uh, honestly, Shen has been struggling a little bit into the meta, not as strong as he once was, but is still a strong duelist if he gets a good matchup. So it's going to be interesting to see whether or not the Trundle or the Volibear is going to be who he's going to be laning against in the top side. Absolutely. I think one of the powerhouse parts of picking a champion like Shen too is the ability to be able to keep one of your valuable carries alive, which in this case, I would imagine might be the AD carry in Gohan to the bottom lane. By the way, shout out to all my DBZ watchers in the Twitch chat now. But you're able to use that stand United. You protect him with a very big shield for enough time for you to be able to use your shadow dash out of the taunt. So I really expect to see a very strong AD carry pick here for Gohan as that AD threat to be able to help their team as there isn't much AD quite yet on that team so far. Yeah, but you got to give RLS some credit. They've selected the skill matchup, the old season three classic wow. of the LeBlanc versus Ari matchup. If you guys have been with League for a long time, this matchup was the premier mid lane matchup we saw at the season three world championship where Faker got his name stopping both sides. <laughs> So we will see how strong Pengal Soul is going to be taking a highly mechanically difficult champion into this LeBlanc. Absolutely. I do think 
in that matchup there too. It really depends on whether or not we're going to see that charm going to be landed from soloing here. We know how mobile LeBlanc is when you're able to use the Mimic, use that distortion. You're kind of all over the place. Very, very hard to kind of tie down really even with the Spirit Rush that Ari does have. But maybe we'll see some uh, PvP 1v1 action there as the Lulu gets picked up now for Songo. This can be really good with one of the hyper carries that we were mentioning earlier on. And that's going to be the Jinx here found. Absolutely, Jinx, one of the biggest hyper carries into the game right now. Getting, she can either go in her minigun on a shorter range, incredible attack speed, or go the longer range rocket launcher with 100% AD scaling. Uh, oh, honestly, yeah. su surprised that that's still in the game, but them crits are going <laughs> to be fat with picks sitting on top of her. So a really safe bot lane coming out for SEAL Team Chris and something they've consistently done. They haven't been in the league long, but they are known for drafting very safe, very team fight oriented compositions. And that's exactly Exactly what they have putting everything onto our dbz champion in gohan who i hope is also a devil artemis fan you know we're gonna definitely bring that up some point to the cast for those of you who do not know who it is but everyone will know later and it's gohan is gonna have a lot of weight to carry on his shoulders this game Oh, absolutely, man. I mean, that's kind of one of the beauties of having Songo on that Lulu. You're able to have some of the safety net of being able to charm the enemy who's going on to you. And you have the wild growth on a champion like Jinx. Look, you got three really big melee targets from the side that RLS has drafted as well. So if the Jinx goes right into Hurricane and is able to position well, that's going to be rough in some of the late game team fights. Yeah, absolutely. The bear is, it has been drafted in the top side, so that's going to be Trundle headed into the jungle, Ziggs headed into the bot lane, LeBlanc in the mid, and Nautilus going into your support role. Uh, this this game is going to be tight, and let's see if SEAL Team Chris is going to get their first win against one of our top teams in the league in RLS. They have been improving every week, and I cannot wait to see if, the, if that improvement is going to amount to much. And here we go. We're just going to hop right on into the game. Getting all nice and warmed up here is again. We only have three games so far this season from the side of FTSTC here found. So they're one and two so far. They're definitely going to be looking to get a victory here against RLS in this game one. And we see the five point star making sure they're playing it safe. Yeah, really conservative early game. No invades as of yet. No wards are going to be down. So the information on these jungle junglers is going to be quite limited as Pengu so is going to hop over the wall and get an auto attack, just trying to establish some dominance early. Uh, one ward into this tri bush is also going to be available. So I expect these junglers to have plenty of avenues to look for ganks early on. Maybe we'll get some action so Snack can uh, stretch out his voice, his vocal prowess early on in this game. Oh, yeah, man. I was expecting a really big banger of a game here, so I had to drink some really warm tea out there. Get the vocal cords nice and moving. Unlike you found, I didn't just have a killer play-by-play uh, -play cast a couple of minutes ago, man. So you're all nice and warmed up, and I could hear, and I can feel it. Speaking of feeling stuff, the tension on this riff right now, you can tell neither of these teams really want to lose right now. They've got a lot on the line here. We're already in week four five day number two we still got a lot of uh wins to come if they do want to make it to the finals here but as for now a couple interesting things to note we do have rls in that mid lane taking tp over the ignite while we got a couple of trades top already a lot of impact on these solo lanes here yeah anti getting out a bunch of damage onto trulax all right but that is into a door and shield so Sin Sin shen will have the ability to sustain up quite thoroughly this is a really early push also so trulax is going to have a, the ability to see us under tower and be quite safe for an extended period of time interesting for anti to play this landing phase so aggressively early on knowing that he is going to be his jungler is headed to that top side looking for the first gank of the game Oh, absolutely. Speaking of aggression, you do have him also taking that Doran's ring there to make sure he has a little bit of extra damage when it comes to that Sky Splitter. You get a bigger shield, you do more damage, and Trulax takes a bit of the heat when it comes to it. But now, back at bottom, a couple of trades going to be going on here. Gohan are going to be extremely low, and against the Ziggs lane that can poke the heck out of you, you got to be careful. Yeah, taking a bunch of damage early. This lane is not going aggressive, as now there's going to be a little bit of trouble in the mid lane. Yeah, we still have the flash up from Solo, but it could press the attack. We got War Leader to say, man, I'm the War Leader. We put the battle pain on his cheeks and walk right to mid. But it does look like Soloing does get out with his flash, so no summoner spells used. No harm, no foul quite yet. Yeah, that is going to be a, a dis an advantage as a lot of damage onto Anti. Oh my god. Wow. Man, dude, we turned around for one second just to look back at Anti with the one two bear punch. And that's going to be lights out for Trulax. First blood over to Team Red. 
Yeah, the Thunder Bear was angry and smacked him down. Solo killed really early on as Pingu Soul is going to dash in and get a little bit of damage. Woof Woof is here and he's just trying to get this wave pushed out securely because he needs to get Arya safe back because you notice there's a teleport onto Pingu Soul but none onto the side of this Arya. Absolutely, man. So we do have War Leader now being able to take control of the top side of the river. Scuttle number one is going to be going to him as the jungler for Team STC is going down here to the bottom half of the scuttle. Demon Soul Ooh, is going to run away. There's a flash out. Dredge line to safety. Beautiful charm. And that's going to be a lot of damage. Solo Wing is taking the kill. Demon Girl lives on. Yeah, and Demon Girl has found herself back in the trenches of the deep really early on. Uh, Nada was giving over a kill as now they're continuing to fight for this crap. Oh yeah, SCC is in a bit of a dangerous spot. Wolf Wolf still there. PTA is going to be on him there. Charm going to be able to help out. War Leader has to walk away. You do get away safety with the extra MS the bottom side scuttle. Yeah, absolutely. And it's hopefully we'll get a little bit of a loss late so I can talk about this tech for Sejuani. Generally, whenever you pick Sejuani and Trundle is available, you always should go Hail of Blades because giving over that much many stats when that Aftershock procs can be quite detrimental when having an unkillable trundle with a bat waving around and he's angry can be quite <laughs> a bit of trouble so i i would have preferred that option that tech choice but a more tanky version has is going to be what wolf of has selected is now some fighting in the top side yeah another big sky splitter was the pta already going to be on to the shen Going to the tier 1, Turdy is going to be all right for now. What a big wave there. He has to stay at that top side tower. Meanwhile, Anti walking into the blue side jungle. Yeah, a bunch of damage on this follower. Constantly getting wards, getting a lot of pressure, making sure that they are going to have uh, Wolf Wolf spotted as much as possible. They know he's not on the top side, which means he has to be bot. There hasn't been that many pings gone down until just now, so now they're going to be quite concerned about a gank into this mid lane. But, well... Well done on the side of Anti getting so much pressure out in this top side. He's level six. He can easily look for a dive onto this uh, Shen. Oh, yeah, man. Sometimes you got to fight fire with fire. With so much engage like we have from this side of STC with that Sejuani ulti, the charm from the RE, you want to be able to get an engage as well, meaning that Stormbringer, now that it's up, he can be looking for something. Wolf Wolf going to come mid, help to shove that wave in. Soloing able to rotate now with the jungle to the bottom half of the map as Dragon is up. Yeah, Penguin Soul is like, why am I playing a 1v2 lane as uh, Taunt onto the tower? Ooh, there's the Stormbringer. Tower's there, but Tower's not firing, and it's True Lax who ends up dying. Anti picking up the second kill for himself and RLS. Yeah, the solo bolo counter is on, and now this is a dragon start with no teleport or Shen available. This could be easily be a big fight. Ooh, Pangu Soul's already here. Going forward to the TP, gonna commence his blue team, gonna secure the dragon, but the fight is still gonna be going forward. Escape looking to try to kite backwards now with a lot of damage, and woof woof as he dies. There's another one as soloing will fall as well. That's gonna be kill number three and four for the side of RLS, but a dragon still on over to STC. Yeah, two kills picked up in the team fight of big win for the side of RLS, getting a bunch of gold inflation. That dragon only means a lot if you manage to stack them up. So STC right. is trying to go into that avenue, get the stacking done, but they need to be more concerned about how much gold they're giving over because these are not weak scaling champions, especially something like a LeBlanc and Ziggs getting gold can be the one shot of a Jinx, who is your main damage threat. Oh, yeah, and one of the problems is as well as so much range comes out of having escape onto the Ziggs, being able to throw out a lot of the bombs before the fight even starts, and it really sets up for a champion like LeBlanc to just be able to go in, be in your face, and just bam, instantly one shot. You said we're going to have to see what the response is for the side of STC. If you got a dragon down a couple of thousand gold, maybe that dragon will make up for a little bit of that differential. Yeah, putting kids in the dirt is what LeBlanc does, but <laughs> Trulax on this Shen is getting pounded. Anti continuously getting good trade after good trade. This lane doesn't get any easier, and if if this whatever Shen is getting punished so hard in lane, it makes it very difficult for him to teleport out without oh, losing yeah. a bunch of tower plates and gold on the back end. As Gohan's going to be in a bit of trouble. Demon Girl's looking for it. Yeah, he is looking to try to kite it out for now. Satcher Char is going to block his escape route as Gohan now to get a lot of damage here. Ignite is going to be on him. Sian United, here comes Shen. Big dredge line from Demon as Demon walks away. Gohan does fall. Support will be taken for the side of RLS. As he's looking for the great escape, Zig's going to run away. Flash in the charm. Soloing is there, but cannot land the E. And that's going to be one for one, but a lot of resources from the side of STC. 
Yeah, a lot of gold getting over, and Trulax needs to base. You cannot spend this much time in the bot side. You know that Volibear is pushing. You need to be running back to that tower as fast as possible. As Escape hits his gameplay button, it instantly obliterates the wave, meaning they're not going to get anything further. But look how much gold is going to be headed over to this top side as Volibear is wailing on that tower. Oh, yeah, fam. This is what you just talked about earlier on. When you don't have that TP as a Shen, it's so much more punishing to be able to rotate around the map and not be able to get back top. Soloing looking to defend his jungle's red buff. Wolf Wolf going forward. Not going to quite land a CC. Not the slow. Pengu's able to go back to the mid lane. Looking to shove that wave. And the anti just taking a lot of gold in that top lane. Yeah, absolutely. Three plates collected up. He's going to easily grab this fourth one before the Shen manages to make it over. This is a very tanky and very expensive Volibear. 700 gold on the shutdown already. So the, killing the bear is going to be quite vital. And it's interesting that uh, something I always get on Sungo for about support mechanics that could have made that fight uh, go at least a little bit heavier into their advantage. You should always look to block skill shots for your AD carry, especially when support's coming in. The Lugal had walked up a bit further. Jinx may have lived a little bit longer and picked up a reset and maybe even chased down that Jinx. So a little bit of criticism air to the bot side of our <laughs> coordinator. Want to make sure he knows he can do a little bit better. Yeah, and you did talk about it earlier on during the draft. One thing that's really crucial on how the side of their team does play is the fact that Songo was in the mid lane now going to the support role and not being able to utilize that Lulu effectively when Jinx is the sole source of a lot of your damage in some of the later game team fights can absolutely be detrimental to the team. Meanwhile, RLS now going to walk towards bottom. We do have the Polymorph going to stop the enemy jungler for now as Rip Harrow going to be thrown onto the bottom lane. Wolf Wolf going to try to get some damage on it. Looks like it will get a free hit onto the tier one turret. A lot of gold back over to red. Yeah, was well, again, our is going to be moving first, but she's sacrificing a lot of CS for this. Pengu so picking up a big CS lead, and the advantage is just accruing in every lane for the side of RLS as they just been stomping. Trulax yep. is under his tower consistently. If he teleports out again, that tower is just gone, and giving up that much gold over to a Vala Bear early makes it very hard for Jinx to do her job. It definitely does, man, and this is kind of where it's the bit of that double-edged sword is how is Gohan going to be able to perform later on into the game? We're going to scratch that for now. Got a little bit of an engage trying to take place from Demon Girl, but the dredge line just goes a little bit too far south. Gohan's going to be all right. Just slowly trying to scale up to the late game. Yeah, playing with very little respect on the side of Demon Girl, hook, looking for every hook in and every possible opportunity. Shadow's available, so they need, are going to be too concerned. As now Ari's going to be in a trouble force to ultimate out. Ooh, Spirit Rush being able to allow her to escape. Shen just there for good measure. I almost seen True Lax give a high five to Ari and said, don't worry, you're going to be okay. Two ultimates are exposed, though, in that process, as we do have Wolf Wolf pathing towards bottom. That topside tower might be in a lot of danger. Yeah, oh my, Trulax is suffering this game, trying to find his way in, 40 CS behind, and his team is just punishing him across the map, because now he's going to have to go back, kind of go back with his tail bullet team his legs. Volibear is going to have already collected up this tower by the time he gets here, and it's not getting any easier for the Shen to find any impactful way into this world game, as that's his second ultimate. Those are the ones that are supposed to be the most valuable. Absolutely, and it all kind of spurred from earlier on in the game where we had to have Trulax TP back to the top lane super early before level 6, meaning when he did use that first Yan United, it kind of all just trickled downhill from there when you come back to lane. That much gold behind the enemy Volley Bear, who uh, had a little bit of a trickery bait type thing going on with the Doran's ring, and he initially builds that Divine Sundor. He's going to be doing so much damage to the Shen here, found that Trulax is now in a really, truly tough spot. Yeah, let's see if how aggressive Anti is going to choose to be. He could easily continue to go into that damage option with all the gold he's collected up. And it looks like he is going to also secure a full push. Now, this is something Trulax can easily freeze if that's the option he wants to go for. But it looks now that they're trying to punish Anti, but it, it looks like Trulax is just going to be forced away yet again. And now he's going to have to be... Ooh. A little bit of damage on. That's going to be the flash from Trulax. Wolf Wolf going forward, but look who's tailing you. War Leader is here, looking to try to conduct himself in a manner the leader would. But it does look like Wolf Wolf and Trulax are able to walk out. Still behind a ton of gold here. RLS is the ones who take the lead. 
Yeah, we. It looks like RLS is making it quite evident that dogs aren't as strong as trolls. It's once again, Sejuani <laughs> forced to run out of her side of the jungle, and it, th it, there hasn't been any avenues in for Woof Woof. He. This is his first chance to look for a kill. Well, that's big. Pengus has to go out here, and that's the ulti from Wolfie, man. The Glacial Prism will end up finding the kill, but now it's him who's in a bit of a prison here. RLS Ant, he's able to take him down. Meanwhile, at the bottom, it's Demon Girl who falls on the Nautilus. There is escape now, gonna be all alone, man. Everybody's fighting found. No one is lost. Soling looking to run away here, as that's gonna be the damage needed, and Soloing gets taken out. The war leader has spoken two for two across the board. Yeah, third kill picked up, and RLS is not done. Three people running under this tower. Are they going to continue to look for this dive? They definitely are. Beautiful Stormbreaker from Annie has a big stun, and that's going to be it for the Jinx. One more going down, man, and True Lax having the worst time at the bottom lane that he's ever had. That's going to be 10 now on the board for RLS. Oh, I, I know no one hit from RLS has built up Soul Stealer yet, but they are collecting souls. Three kills <laughs> and a tower picked up underneath this uh, underneath this tier one. So much damage came out, and there was nothing followed up. Sen also used his ult on the on a Gohan, and it just didn't matter. He just didn't get anything out, and the Jinx dies anyway. So another resource used, and she's S Seal Team Chris is struggling yep. right now. I think what it really is, is that uh, low-key anti on the top side of RLS has a death note in his pocket. And every time he's able to take a kill down, I swear this dude has wrote Trulax 21's name down three darn times. And each time he's died and came back to life, and he does not stop. Yeah, Volibear goes back to base, picks up the Athema's chains also, so he's going to probably chain up the Jinx, make it so she's more vulnerable to CC, and she does less damage to him, as now Gohan's the one in trouble. Well, that's a major overextension there. It's going to be 2v1. Root just there to make sure it is secured, and it's Gohan who's not able to evolve here. Not able to go Super Saiyan, will end up falling. That's going to be 11 kills now. So much gold, and they're not stopping here, found. And he's already going to be going forward here with the beautiful shield going to be on him. Looking for the kill here. True Lack trying to run to the safety net of the Ari. If he's able to get to the blaster cone, but it's Demon Girl right there to greet him. And that's going to be one more over to the Angry Bear. Oh, yeah. He just, that, that is once again True Lax falling. 47 CS to 108. Struggling significantly in this game. Hasn't found his in yet. And Jesus, they are anti is finding him every time he's out of position. Oh, yeah, man. I feel like we're watching like a twisted Netflix version of Yogi the Bear. Do you, this is him now. Do you, do you feel old yet found? Do you feel old yet, man? Because I do. He is just out of control, dude, taking picnic baskets from everybody on Team STC. And now they're going right back over to the second Rift Herald of the game. Yeah, I like the Yogi the Bear reference, anti-Yogi. And then, Ooh. Ooh. And it looks wow. like Trulax's boo-boo as they're not <laughs> finding a way in. Yes. The miniature yeah. barrack returning. Al oh, Demon yeah. Penguin Soul is, is going to get the binding up. Yeah, the ethereal chains were able to connect on that one from the Pengu Soul as the rest of the team now from STC going to help out, make sure Wolf Wolf is able to get back away safely. But the problem is found that the dragon is now going to spawn here, going to be dragon number two, potentially, as RLS are first to act here over the bottom half of the map, but it doesn't look like they want the dragon quite yet. And he's going to be going to the mid lane here as True Lax already forced to stand united with Gohan. That bomb not going to land, but Soloing is now in a bad spot, and Ignite is going to take him down as Wolf Wolf now, looking to try to put kind of potential little bit of damage away from the rest of the squadron. True Lax, Songo, and Gohan are alive, but you can't say the same for Wolf Wolf and Solo. Wolf Wolf must really like dogs because all he's seeing is gray is another depth is coming <laughs> over three depths of the game for this jungler who has not managed to find any significant advantages and war leader is doing enough as now here to dive. That is a beautiful Stormbringer there. Tower now going to be stopped, and it's True Lax just stuck in his tracks and two kills. Back on over to RLS, back to the gray screen. It seems like there was a one-way ticket on the Greyhound bus right to Victory Street, and it has the names of every RLS player on the roster as Songo now in a bad spot as Demon Girl. We're going to try to get a kite out. Pengu Soul going to get taken down. Songo's able to defend off that Tier 3 turret in the mid lane for now. Yeah, another series of advantages for RLS getting the dive. They have just been diving with reckless abandon, getting full value out of the Electric Bear's ultimate. 
And I don't know. At this point, the gold may be a little bit too far for SEAL Team Chris to do anything significant. 11,000 at 18 minutes. Ooh, this is a rough one. This this is the LCS nightmare. I, I don't know what, what to say. All these lanes are losing. And Gohan's just like, guys, just let me scale. Exactly right. Well, look, we knew coming into this that STC were a bit of an underdog. They didn't have the entire five weeks and ten match days to be able to improve themselves and get used to the tournament format. Sure, they're coming back and have had a little bit of experience in previous other rosters, like we've seen um, from uh, RLS in the Mythic Division um, a couple of seasons ago last season. STC didn't quite have that same luck. And again, this is really their fourth game together. They're one and two. The best thing they can do now is try to come together and look to salvage whatever they can for this game and look for any little area of improvement. But again, the game is not over yet, Found There is still some line of action in which they're able to pull this one back. Yeah, they're going to try to find the best way possible to pull this way back, but it was, they don't seem to have any damage in any air area. This is really all on Gohan to see how much damage he can put out, see where he can find this taunt up. Ooh, well, as Goku says, wherever there's a will, there is a way. As Pangu struggling to find his way out of the fight there, going to be one kill going back over to the side of STC. Fulak still here. Flash and Taunt is available, and so is the Flash Charm. So Luing is able to land it on Escape. It's Escape looking to run away, but the Polymorph for the Whimsy out of the Lulu is going to be coming out. Bit of an alley you play there, but the Charm is going to land, but it's not going to be enough quite yet. Demon Grill doing a phenomenal job at kiting out here. Enough time for War Leader now to make his way to the mid lane. Beautiful Pillar, better Flash, and that's going to be it for Gohan here. Going to be two for one so far. Escape is still alive, and RLS Anti is moving forward. Forward. Stormbringer gonna get him closer to the tower here. It's gonna be very low. Another kill going down as the Rampage gonna get picked up and it's all but over for RLS as they slowly break down the base of Team STC. Yeah, 20 minutes on the clock in him already taking. This is a Ziggs with Satchel, so let's see how much damage the going charm is gonna land. Yep, and that's another stun right after. Soloing just struggling to get back to the fountain. Looking for a drink of the water fountain, but it's not going to be there. And RLS taken down one of the turrets into the Nexus. That's number two in shambles as it does fall. War leaders now slowly clubbing down at the STC Nexus. Couple of hits left, but STC is not going to give up quite yet. One more damage, and that's going to be lights on out. RLS take home this game. Yeah, 50 gold picked up by Ziggs, getting the last auto. It looked like everybody was going to dive. STC looked like they could have defended, but they did not have enough. And geez, that was a quick one. Our first cast of the day, 20 minutes onto the game clock, and it's completely over. Yeah, that was definitely a bit of a snowball effect going here. We knew we had to get to the late game in a decent fashion. But looking at those damage charts, we did not have enough time for the Jinx to really pop off. And look at the damage that Anti and the Ziggs were able to create on the Volley Bear and Ziggs. Two opposite sides of the map, yet they still did very similar in terms of damage. Yeah, GG. This, this the Vera was too big. Ziggs got too much too much gold early, and when Ziggs gets ahead, the gold can easily escalate with how many towers can drop almost instantaneously. And I just, there's nothing further I can say on this game uh, on this game because there wasn't much strategic when that was that hard of a stopping. Yeah, man, that was a little bit rougher than a really late night with some restless leg syndrome and you just can't sleep, but the bags in your eyes keep on growing. It is Team RLS who do take the win here. We are going to go to a quick intermission and we are going to also get an interview with the winning team. We'll be right back after the break.
Hello, folks, and welcome back. I am friend or foes Sharigan, and I have joining me today on the interview desk RLS War Leader, the uh, Trundle in the Jungle from last game. So, how you doing, War Leader? Oh, I'm feeling great after that one. Yeah. So, uh, I, I do it again. I'm gonna reference the lounge like I did the other day uh, in the previous game. Uh, so, yet la yesterday we were talking on the lounge about the roles that have the biggest impact, and you had mentioned that you thought jungle. So, I have to say. Apparently, you did pretty darn well on Trundle this game. Yeah, I mean, when we saw them pick the Sejuani early in the first rotation, I think it's a mistake that a lot of teams have been falling into, that they pick Sejuani in situations where Sejuani is okay, but not a great pick. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something we did earlier in the season, and we learned really fast from it. And so as soon as we see that, we know we can counter it with Trundle. We know they already picked the Ari, so it's not going to have significant synergy so yeah i can just give me the trundle and i can sort of do whatever i want pretty much it definitely seemed like you kind of had free reign on it uh most of rls seemed like they did uh all of y'all going into this draft did you kind of like uh have an idea of which uh lane opponent was probably going to be the most difficult well yesterday we watched um i uh, i'm soloing zed absolutely dominate uh I forget was that against girl i think that was against girl i believe so yes and so after watching that game we we knew that this new player that the only information we have is that they had a really pop off performance so that's definitely who we focused down and it was pretty obvious if you looked at the fans that we tried to pinch their champion pool mm -hmm. and we're able to do so in a way that we predicted putting them onto their fourth most comfortable champion and one that we liked our matchups into. All right. And so was that kind of like the reason why you went with the uh, the Ziggs Nautilus pickup? Or is that something just that you've been experimenting with and thought you could pull out this game? So as far as Ziggs goes, we just really like the pick. Our bot laner escape is just really comfortable on it. Uh, Pengu is also really comfortable on it to take it into the mid lane. So whenever we see that's just left available for us, we're going to grab it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a pick that we really excel with, and it's a pick that's really flexible and really strong, and I'm very surprised that uh, we don't see it more often, either in the ban phase or the pick phase of other teams. I feel like Ziggs is one of those just uh, non-standard kind of like bot lane picks that it's kind of one of those things where uh, people, they, they can see the merits of it, and they can see how good it is, but they just say, mm, maybe I'm, it's not something I'm really interested in um so with uh the way this game played out you guys had a pretty good hand we were able to take down stc so hopefully uh there won't be too much staff reprisals for that uh <laughs> but uh i do want to ask you about this next game that's going to be coming up it's rex regalis versus in the trees uh how do you think these two teams stack up against each other and where exactly do you think they're going to be uh like who who's going to be coming out on top so i think that in the trees has uh really i mean They've been dominant, but they've also really struggled compared to what we know they can do and what we've seen in previous seasons. And right now, Rex is just absolutely on fire, and they have an absolute mastery of the macro game where all the other teams, including, I, I want to say, including the Luna teams, Yubi and stuff, that they're just still looking up to and trying to catch up to what Rex is currently doing. So I would definitely expect them to take the game. It, well, the... it would be a nice surprise if INT took the game because mm -hmm. I do want to see them sort of get back into form. We know they can be a really dangerous team. And um, Bow Explode as a jungler is just a player in this league that I really want to see succeed. That they most certainly can. And, you know, that's a really hot take uh, to say that uh, Rex might be better than uh, UB. So we'll have to see if they're able to keep the fire, go uh, fire going for their, uh, their hot streak. And, and all that. Uh, so, War Leader, I want to say thank you so much for dropping by for this interview. Yeah, uh, if I could, if I could say one more thing. Absolutely, um, go right ahead. The the RLS mantra: another dub for the Ruby League server. <laughs> another dub for the Ruby League server. Exactly. Way to go, War Leader. I got to say, you guys put on a great show. And we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for doing the interview uh, as well. Everyone, stick around. We will be right back after this short break, and we'll be having Rex Regalis versus In the Trees. Junjun Maru desu. 